this fight? You know, I felt I had a lot, I had a lot, you know, that, that, that whole struggle with the hurricane and um, injury, I tried to not let it get to me, but it, it was a lot of, it was, it was a lot of stress with that. You know, I it, it did go through some tough times. Uh, I tried to put it out of my mind. I have, you know, my wife and my, my family did a good job of trying to take it, the pressure off me. UFC helped me, which is huge. <clears throat> and uh, so I was able to, you know, focus on the fight, obviously. But I think anytime you have adversity like that, it makes you stronger, it makes you a better person, stronger person, and a better fighter. I felt like I became from it. And the time off, I felt like I, I did got a lot better at stand up, actually. So it helped. É, vou perguntar em português, Anderson, é, você falou lá em cima que você não pensa em revanche, é, mas a gente viu que o Dana White está fa insistindo né, nessa revanche, então quais seriam talvez as condições para você querer uma revanche, o que te motivaria, talvez uma luta no Brasil contra o Chris Weidman e para o próprio Dana White, se ele acha que de repente então, essa luta poderia ser no Brasil, já que no Brasil você é um ídolo, tem tantos brasileiros torcendo por você, como a gente viu hoje na arena lotada. A pergunta para o Anderson foi, você disse lá depois do jogo que você não está interessado em um rematch, mas Dana disse que ele quer que o rematch aconteça. O que motivaria você? O que faria você querer um rematch? Seria um jogo no Brasil? O que seria o que seria o que você quer ir lá? E para a Dana, você pensa em um jogo desse rematch com Chris Wyman e Anderson no Brasil? Bom, primeiro a gente tem que respeitar o campeão. Ele é o campeão, a gente tem que respeitar. Ele venceu, uh, ele me venceu e, e, e merece todos, todas as glórias e o respeito de todos vocês aqui. E eu, realmente eu não estou pensando, pensando nisso agora. Estou pensando nos meus filhos, estou pensando na minha casa. E eu só vou pensar nisso daqui dois, três meses. Eu quero dar um tempo para mim mesmo. Estou muito tempo fazendo isso, muito tempo defendendo esse cinturão. E, e é uma pressão muito grande. Claro que não é desculpa, ele foi melhor do que eu. É, os erros acontecem, eu cometi um erro e ele usou as armas que ele tinha para me vencer. Mas eu não estou pensando nisso agora, não. Agora eu estou pensando em, em, em ir para minha casa, ver os meus filhos e... e e fazer os meus trabalhos extra luta é isso que eu vou fazer. First of all, we need to respect uh, my opponent. Chris is now the champion. He won the fight, but uh, really right now I'm thinking of going home. I want to be with my kids. I want to take some time off and maybe three to four months think about what I'm gonna do. Uh, but right now that I can't really think about that. Uh, there's, I just want to take some time off and, and go home and, and think about everything and, and be alone. And there's a lot of pressure in defending this title. I defended it for a long time, so I need some time for myself. And I think that's fair, and I respect that. For Chris, please. Chris, you were obviously uh, extremely confident throughout this entire process, but we all wondered what would it be like the moment you actually got in the cage and Anderson Silva was standing across. Did that confidence stay with you throughout, or was there any moment where you felt yourself wavering a little bit and the, and the moment did get to you at all? No, it was crazy. I felt um, <clears throat> really calm in the in the dressing room, almost overly calm. I'm like, hey, is this – usually I might be a little bit more nervous than this. Is this bad? I don't know. But, no, you know, you always have doubts. Uh, you know, I just put – I just put it in the hands of God, man. I just took all, all my all my anxiety. Uh, I put it in his hands, and I really felt – really relaxed going there. I felt confident the whole time. He was walking to the cage the whole time. I'm like, I got this. I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this, and I'm not – this is – this. I was destined for this opportunity. I just really felt like it was my time, and I'm not going to let – I'm not going to let myself, I'm not going to beat myself. And if I didn't beat myself, I thought I was going to win the fight. For Anderson, if I could please, uh, the one criticism I see out there is people frustrated feeling that uh, maybe Chris didn't beat you so much as you allowed him to beat you by, by you know, the, the movements that you make and the way you approach the fight. Do you feel that's accurate at all? And, and how would you address those people that, that criticize you for the way you fought tonight? Tem gente criticando, falando que talvez o Chris não te venceu, que foi alguns erros que você fez, que quase você que se perdeu para si mesmo. O que, que você fala disso? Tem, tem coerência? As pessoas vão falar muitas coisas agora, né? Vão falar que o Chris teve sorte, que eu é, menosprezei o Chris, e, enfim. Ele deu o melhor dele, eu dei o meu melhor e ele venceu essa noite. A gente tem que respeitar o campeão, respeitar o que ele fez hoje. Ele deu o melhor dele e venceu o cara que era o campeão antes. Então, a gente tem que respeitar isso e tem que é, respeitar o que a gente fez pelo esporte. É isso. You know, people are going to be saying a lot of things now. They're going to say that Chris got lucky. They're going to say I underestimated him. But we need to respect what he did. We need to respect that he went in there and he beat me. And, and that's pretty much it. Just one short one for uh, Dana. Dana, on the broadcast tonight, there was uh, some teasing that there would be a George St. Pierre announcement. Obviously, you did announce you know, the Hendricks fight officially. 
Was there something else in the works? Was there something hanging in the balance that there, there might be an announcement for GSP this evening? Have, have things played out differently? No. So it was just the Yeah, it was, it was the Hendricks fight. Yeah, that fight was so awesome. Uh, this, this question is for Frankie, but for all the fighters, if you feel compelled to answer this, being it that this is the Fan Expo weekend and Frankie is always a fan favorite because of the heart that he fights with, how affected are you by the sound of the crowd? Do you even hear it? Does it affect you? Does it amp you up? Do you perform better or worse because of it? Yeah, I love the emotions of the crowd, uh, you know, especially got, you know, the Brazilian fans cheering for Charles and then the USA fans cheering for me and then Everyone's cheering for him, everyone's cheering for me. It's great, you know. Uh, I think some point in the third round, I couldn't even hear my corner because the, the, the crowd was uh, cheering so loud. So I definitely feed off that. Dana, over here to the left. Oh, you're, oh, okay. At, at, at the risk of pushing this uh, point too far, uh, before the fight, I think it was at the pre-fight presser, you said we could print that there would guaranteed be a rematch between these two but Anderson said he wants a few months off to think about it. I don't, I don't think you want to keep Chris Weidman on the shelf, so are things just kind of up in the air and you have to wait? <laughs> don't push it. What do you want me to say? The guy said he wants to take some time off. Um, like I said, Anderson Silva said, before he walked in, I told you guys, and then he came in and said, I have losses on my record. Sure. It's been a long time since this guy has lost a fight. And I'm sure he forgets what it feels like to lose a fight. And, and, and like he said, there's a lot of pressure that goes along with, with, with defending the title and all the other things that go on. You know, just relax, everybody. Relax, so, let the guy go home. Let him, you know, let him think about things and we'll see what happens. So maybe a rematch, maybe Chris defends against someone else. We'll just, to be determined. Yeah. Rematch. Dana, um, over here on, 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 the, on the back. Yeah. I know you already said this, this was a great fight, but what do you think uh, on, on the way it ended? What, what does it does to the, uh, Anderson's legacy? You've been talking about his legacy for a long time. What does, what does it, uh, how, how does it feel, like now, feel right now about his legacy? What does it do to his legacy? Yeah. Nothing. I mean, the guy's had the longest win streak. The guy's, the, the guy's been an amazing fighter. Um, <laughs> You know, th this, is, this is one of those moments when, you know, a guy goes on a run like Anderson Silva has gone and all the creeps and the weirdos come out of the woodwork, you know, and start talking shit about how, oh, look at he wasn't this great. He was, what he's done is amazing. Nobody's ever done what this man has done. Nobody's ever done it the way that he has done it. And uh, this doesn't do anything to his legacy. You know, like I said earlier, the stuff that he was doing, that people are saying, oh, that, uh, if he did that stuff and won the fight, they'd be talking about what a genius he is. He got clipped. He got caught. Anybody can get caught on any given night, even Anderson Silva. It happened tonight. You know? Chris Weidman kept his composure. Anderson Silva said it. He said it. Everybody knows that he was doing it to mentally mess with him to get him into his game. And if you notice, the first thing Chris came out and did in the fight was take the Anderson down and started going for submissions. When Anderson started messing with him, he didn't try to take him down again for a long time. He, he was messing with his head and trying to get in his head and trying to get him to fight his kind of fight. You know, and if he did it and ended up knocking him out, he'd be a genius. But because this kid kept his composure and, and ended up catching him, now it's like some big controversy. Is Anderson not as good as he was? What, what's this going to do to his legacy and all that bullshit? And uh, sorry for changing the, sub, uh, the subject, but uh, you, you mentioned a, a lot of cities uh, for the tours. And you didn't mention Mexico City or any any place near to Mexico with the with the tour uh, that you're having with the with the fighters. Yeah, what about it? Uh, I, I don't know if, if if it wasn't on the plan to be there. I know you were impressed by the way Canelo and Floyd got a lot of people on on the public plaza. And I have no idea what you're asking me. <laughs> why, Are why, we going to Mexico City? Why the tour is not coming okay. to Mexico City with, okay. with the fighters? I, I know you're not having a show over there, but. It, yeah, it's not on the list, which is pretty stupid. It should be on the list, and yeah, we should, probably should go there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. For Tim Kennedy, uh, I'm sure you have world-class uh, world grapplers that come in to help you prepare for a Hodger Gracie, but what was it like once he took your back, you know, and how were you able to, was it easy to keep your composure and use the proper sub-defense? You know, I... Uh... I was really disappointed in my performance. First of all, I guess uh, UFC jitters are real. 
and uh, not take anything away from Hodger. He, he's amazing. You know, he's, I, I do train with some of the best grass, grapplers on the planet and, um, you know, nobody gets my back. Hodger got my back, you know, and, and kept me there for three minutes. Um, you know, I, I stayed cool and tried uh, to hit him in the face, you know. Um, I really wanted to finish him and everything I did tonight, he's long, he's rangy and uh, I couldn't reach his chin. So uh, I, I just tried to stay composed and keep hitting him, you know. And for Chris, you know, the sequence where you knocked him out, uh, it, w would you say you were getting wild as well, you know, falling for some of the antics? And, and were you getting close to going back to the wrestling as well? Yeah, you know, the whole time I was, I was looking to mix it up. <clears throat> I, was even, I was faking some shots or, or whatnot. You know, you got you to gotta kind of deceive your opponent. But, uh, no, I, was just, I just got tired. I was just, I, I was just like, I'm, I'm going for him. You know, I had to believe in my stand-up, and I, and I went for it threw a couple punches and landed, and that was it. For Charles Oliveira, he uh, looks like he's grown in the last few years. And is 145 still easy for you? Because, you know, you came from 155, but it looks like you've grown back up and also added some muscle. So will you be staying at, four, at 45? Você pensa que você vai ficar nessa categoria mesmo, ou você está se sentindo bem? Como é que está? Eu penso em continuar nessa categoria mesmo. Eu enfrentei um grande campeão, um grande lutador. Eu dei o meu melhor. E acabou sendo um dia dele, a vitória dele. Essa é a minha categoria, eu tenho que treinar, voltar para casa, treinar de novo, me focar e esperar a minha próxima luta. Yeah, I feel good in this weight class. I fought a, a champion and uh, he took the best of me, but I feel really good in this weight class and I feel I just, I just need to go home and train harder. Anderson, can you talk about, is that what you were trying to do with, with the tactics that you were doing? Is that what you were trying to do, is keep the fight upright and, and try to draw him into an opening where you could knock him out. Is that what you were doing with those tactics? É o que você estava fazendo com essa tática era tentar atrair ele para o teu jogo para deixar ele ficar em pé e explorar algum erro dele? Eu estava tentando fazer o que eu sempre fiz, meu trabalho da melhor forma possível. E como eu já havia dito, ele foi melhor do que eu, né? Eu cometi alguns erros aos quais eu vou voltar para casa e revê-los. Mas ele foi melhor, a gente tem que, é, 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 não tem que se focar no que eu fiz de errado. E se focar no que ele fez de melhor, ele é o um novo campeão e isso que importa agora para todos os fãs do UFC. Eu vou continuar fazendo meu trabalho e estou feliz com o que eu fiz hoje. Claro que eu não queria ter perdido, mas acontece. I feel like I went in there and I, and I do, did what I always do and I did my job, but uh, we got to stop thinking about the mistakes that I made and, and look at what he did. You know, uh, obviously I didn't want to lose this fight, but I need to go back and, and look at the mistakes that I made. But obviously what he did uh, deserves a lot of uh, respect. And, and Chris, did you feel at all that what he was doing, did it cross some kind of line of being, you know, unprofessional? Uh, no, I was just, uh, <clears throat> I expect that from him. He's, like, again, he's a genius at getting into people's minds. He's, he's a smart dude. And uh, I was just, I just, Kept, kept my composure, kept moving forward, kept believing in myself, and um, you know, it got to the point. I'm just, I just believed in my stand up more than the second before that, and I said, "Go for it," you know, and um, that was really it. Dana, does the, does the new contract with Anderson allow you to maybe hold his feet to the fire more than you were able to do under the old deal, like making this fight or, or say like we're gonna we're gonna demand that you participate in this fight? Is, does it change anything? Um, no, I, I, listen, I've never had a problem getting Anderson to fight. Anderson's always fought. You know, Anderson will say what he will say in the public, but when Anderson and and I speak behind closed doors. Anderson Silva has never turned down a fight. Anderson Silva has never said, I won't fight this guy and I won't fight that guy. Even when we got to the point where he said, you know, I don't like what Chael Sonnen said, I don't like what he did, you know, I, you know, I, I, I would prefer not even give this guy a shot at the title. He fought Chael Sonnen. He's, he's, he's been a great champion. He's fought everybody that, he, that we ever asked him to fight. He's done whatever we've asked him to do. You know, have we had our little moments here and there? Yeah, but nothing... It's nothing major. There's, there's no, no clause in any contract that'll, that'll say, you know, oh no, we got to deal with Anderson and he's got to do this or that. He's always been a great champion and a great, uh, and a good man, a man of his word. Hi, Chris. Congratulations over here. How you 
Uh, well, Anderson was uh, plenty of time pretending he was like hurt or not hurt. Did he ever hurt you? Did you ever fe felt hurt by him? No, uh, never felt anything, nothing to the head that bothered me. Uh, the leg kicks, I'm like, I gotta start checking those. Uh, but other than that, uh, no. I took, a, I actually, on purpose, I Congrats. put my hands down, took a couple punches to the forehead just to let him know I'm not scared to put my head out there. And I bleed in my, uh, my chin, bit down on my mouthpiece and said, you know, let's do this. And that was really it. I'm going to take two more questions, if there are two more questions. Right Go here. ahead. Questions for Mark. Mark right here, to your right. Mike Mardonis, MiddleEasy.com. First of all, congratulations on an awesome transformation and probably one of the best wins of your career. What were your thoughts on the main event, and were you disappointed at all that you weren't the guy to dethrone Anderson Silva? Uh, you know, I, I've, I, you know I, I just want to say if Anderson doesn't fight, Chris, I would love to step in. I'd love to step in because this was a real Mark Munoz tonight. Uh, when I fought Chris, I actually had some adversity uh, fighting him. So, um, so I would, I would really love the, a rematch with him. So, um, if if he shouldn't, if he doesn't take it, but um, at the same time, uh, I felt amazing. You know, the stuff that I went through, I went through it. And, you know, that's, that's the stuff that I think a lot of people go through. And, and I was just vocal about it. And, um, you know, now I'm past it. It made me a better person. And now I'm, now I'm here, and now I'm here to stay. And what was your reaction to the knockout? Yeah, um, I was disappointed. Because <laughs> I know what Anderson can do. I know what he can do, and I know what, what, uh, what he's capable of. And, and um, he got caught tonight. He did, and um, you know he'll be back though. He's a champion. You know he's been there for so long. So, um, so yeah. And I told him, I said, I, I, you know, I want to train with you. You know, let's train. So, and he said yeah, he'll come train. So, thanks, Mark. Yeah. yeah. One more question. Somebody have one more. You're done. Thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate it. Have a great night. <laughs>